This video will demonstrate how to perform SDS PAGE for protein characterization. SDS PAGE stands for Sodium Dodecyl Sulfate Polyacrylamide Gel Electrophoresis. Here is the equipment you will need. First, insert a short plate and a 1mm spacer plate into the casting frame. Make sure the feet of the casting frame are on the bottom. Make sure the plates are also leveled at the bottom. Then tighten the clamp to secure the position of the plates. Next, install the casting frame with the plates onto the casting stand and ensure the setup is tight and secured. Check the seal of your setup by pipetting DD water halfway up the plates. Observe if any DD water leaks. If there are no leaks, then remove the DD water either using Kim wipes or filter paper until it's almost dry. When the gel casting stand is set up, prepare the 12% resolving gel solution in a 50 milliliter Falcon tube. Mix 3.3 milliliters of DD water, 4.0 milliliter of 30% acrylamide solution. Liquid acrylamide is neurotoxic and should be handled with caution. 2.5 milliliters of lower stock and 100 microliters of 10% SDS together. Right before you're ready to pour the gel, add 10 microliters of 10% APS and 4 microliters of TMED. Please note that TMED has to be added in the fume hood due to its strong odor. TMED catalyzes the polymerization of acrylamide. If TMED is added way too early, the gel will set before it's ready to be pipetted in between the plates. Mix gently, then immediately pipette the resolving gel solution in between the plates with a glass pipette until the resolving gel reaches just above the green line, or approximately 1 cm from the top of the short plate. Please monitor to make sure there is no leak at the bottom of the plates. Pipette 200 microliters of isopropanol on the resolving gel. You should observe a thin layer on the gel. While waiting for the resolving gel to polymerize, prepare the stacking gel solution in another 50 milliliter Falcon 2. Mix 1.35 milliliters of DD water, 0.335 milliliters acrylamide stock, 0.25 milliliter upper stock and 20 microliters of 10% SDS. Once the resolving gel has formed, which takes roughly 30 minutes, drain the isopropanol. Gently rinse the top of the gel with DD water and dry with Kim wipes. Right before you're ready to pour the stacking gel, add 20 microliters of 10% APS and 2 microliters of TMED into the stacking gel solution. Mix well. Immediately pipette about 1 milliliter of stacking gel solution on top of the resolving gel in between the plates. Fill to the top, then insert the comb into the solution. Wait for the gel to polymerize. After the gel is formed, unclip the casting frame with the gels from the casting stand. Then carefully remove the glass plates from the casting frame. Wrap the plates carefully in wet paper towel and saran wrap, then store in the cold room until next week. To prepare samples for SDS page, label the microfuge tubes corresponding to your samples. Pipette 40 microliters of the fish extract into the microfuge tube and add 40 microliters of sample buffer. Heat the tubes at 100 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes, then pulse centrifuge for 5 seconds. Remove the gel from the saran wrap and paper towel. Tightly secure the gel with the short plate facing inwards onto the running module. Each running module can hold two gels. If only one gel is being run, you will need to use the buffer dam in place of the second gel. Do not directly label your plates with tape because this will prevent the gel from running properly. Instead, plates can be directly labeled with a permanent marker. 
Each tank can accommodate two running modules, which will be four gels altogether. Insert the running module into the tank. Make sure the module properly inserts into the slot in the tank. At this point, check to see if the lid fits appropriately. Pour the 10 times diluted running buffer solution into the running module between the two plates until wells on the two plates are fully submerged. Check to make sure the running modules aren't leaking any buffer solution into the tank. The tank only needs to be filled halfway with the buffer solution if running two gels. Now you're ready to load the samples. Remove the comb so you can see each well clearly. You can install the loading guide on the gel to make it easier to load your samples properly into each lane. Carefully load 10 microliters of sample solution into each well. The pipette tip should be inserted into the well in between the plates, deep enough to prevent overflow of the sample to the neighboring lanes. Slowly release the sample solution into the lane. When complete, remove the pipette tip, change the tip, then load another sample. For the molecular weight marker, you also need to load 10 microliters into the well, and it should be loaded in one of the center lanes for easy comparison. When all the samples are loaded, close the lid on the tank and insert the electrodes properly into the power supply. Red wire into the red slot and black into the black slot. Set the power to 20 milliamps per plate and run for one hour. For example, if four plates are being run, the power should be set at 80 milliamps. The power can also be set to voltage. The voltage used isn't dependent on the number of plates, so a consistent voltage can be used to run any number of plates. For example, a consistent 120 volts can be used. You should initially observe the sample or standard solution to be condensed into a thin band through the stacking gel. Then the band will gradually migrate down the resolving gel. When the blue dyes have reached close to the bottom of the gel, stop the run. Unplug the power supply, then remove the running module from the tank and drain the running buffer. Remove the glass plates carefully from the running module, then carefully use the gel releaser to remove the gel from the glass plates. You can trim off the stacking gel carefully before proceeding to staining. Transfer the gel into a square petri dish. Then pour the Komasi blue staining solution into the petri dish, submerging the gel fully. Place the square petri dish into a metal tray to avoid spillage in the incubator. Then place in a 50 degrees Celsius incubator to stain for 30 minutes. Remove the gel with a tweezer and make sure you can observe clear bands on the gels before discarding the staining solution and replacing it with the de-staining solution. When de-staining, add a piece of Kim Wipe or absorbent paper towel to help absorb the dye. De-stain at 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes with periodic swirling to facilitate the de-staining process. You may also want to change the de-staining solution every 15 minutes until the background of the gel is transparent. When the de-staining is complete, store the gel in DD water until you can scan and analyze it with a densitometer. Properly dispose of any liquid acrylamide containing solutions in the acrylamide waste container. Polymerized gels can be disposed directly in the garbage, while the staining and de-staining solutions can be disposed into the non-halogenated waste container.